Good morning, UCLA. So today we're going to be doing lesson 137. I miss each and every one of you so much. And let's get started. Today we're going to learn a new rule and play a game. Listen to this rule. If the teacher says clap, hold up your hands. Listen again. If the teacher says clap, hold up your hands. Say the rule. Get ready. Right. If the teacher says, clap, hold up your hands. Tell me, what are you going to do if the teacher says, clap? Get ready. Right. Hold up my hands. Are you going to hold up your hands if the teacher holds up? Her hands, get ready, right, no. Are you going to hold up your hands if the teacher says clap, get ready, right, yes. Are you going to hold up your hands if the teacher says now, get ready. Right, no. What's the rule? Get ready. Right, if the teacher says clap, hold up your hands. Let's see if I can fool you. Get ready, clap. Good job and holding up your hands. Let's see if I can fool you. Get ready. Hold up your hands. Good job at not holding up your hands. Let's see if I can fool you. Get ready. Clap. Good job at holding up your hands. I wasn't able to fool you. Let me give you guys some student points because I was not able to fool you. We're going to tell why things are the same and why they are different. Listen, a boat and a fish, think of them. See if you can name two ways they are the same. Right, a boat and a fish are the same because they both go in the water. So you told me how a boat and a fish are, get ready, right, the same. Listen, a boat and a fish, think of them, see if you can name two ways they are different. Right, a boat is an animal, I'm sorry, a boat is a vehicle, but a fish is an animal. So you told me how a boat and a fish are. Get ready. Right, different. Here's another one. Listen, a stove and a refrigerator. Think of them. See if you can name two ways they are the same. Okay, so you're saying that a stove and a refrigerator are the same because they both go in the kitchen. So you told me how a stove and a refrigerator are. Get ready. Right, the same. Listen, a stove and a refrigerator. Think of them. 
See if you could name two ways they are different. Okay, so you're saying that a stove and a refrigerator are different because a stove heats food and a refrigerator does not heat up food. So you told me how a stove and a refrigerator are. Get ready. Right, different. Good job. Let me give you some more student points. You guys are rocking it. You guys are beating Miss Torres. You're going to say sentences that tell the opposite. Listen, the boy came home early. Say that sentence. Get ready. Right. The boy came home early. Here's the sentence that tells the opposite about when he came home. The boy came home late. Say that sentence. Get ready. Right. The boy came home late. Again, say the sentence that tells the opposite. Get ready. Right, the boy came home late. New sentence, the paint on the floor was wet. Say that sentence. Get ready. Right, the paint on the floor was wet. Now say the sentence that tells the opposite about the paint. Get ready. Right, the paint on the floor was dry. New sentence, the chickens were awake. Say that sentence. Get ready. Right, the chickens were awake. Now say the sentence that tells the opposite about the chickens. Get ready. Right, the chickens were asleep. Very good, let's uh, do a chat, let's do a good job. Good job, good job, good job, good job. G-O-O-D-J-O-B, good job, good job, yay, good job. Let's see how much information you remember. What do we call a place with lots of books? Get ready. Right, a library. Say the whole thing. Get ready. Right, a library is a place with lots of books. What do we call a place where airplanes land? Get ready. Right, an airport. Say the whole thing. Get ready. Right, an airplane, an airport is a place where airplanes land. What do we call a person who cuts down trees? Get ready. Right, a lumberjack. Say the whole thing. Get ready. Right, a lumberjack is a person who cut down trees. What do we call a building for fire trucks? Get ready. Right, a fire station. Say the whole thing. Get ready. Right. A fire station is a building for fire trucks. 
what do we call a person who flies an airplane? Get ready. Right, a pilot. Say the whole thing. Get ready. Right, a pilot is a person who flies an airplane. Get ready for some new information. Listen, a librarian is a person who works in a library. What do we call a person who works in a library? Get ready. Right, a librarian. Say the whole thing. Get ready. Right, a librarian is a person who works in a library. What do we call a what do we call a place where airplanes land? Get ready. Yes, an airport. Say the whole thing. Get ready. Right. An airport is a place where airplanes land. What do we call a person who works in a library? Get ready. Right, a librarian. Say the whole thing. Get ready. Right, a librarian is a person who works in a library. Good job. Good, rem good. remember about the librarian for tomorrow. Look at this picture. What is this? Get ready. Yes, a cabinet. Name the part of a cabinet. Get ready. Right, doors. Get ready. Right, handles. Get ready. Right, a countertop. Now answer these questions. What is, why does a cabinet have a countertop? Yes, good, to put things on it. Why does a cabinet have doors? Very good, yes, to protect what is inside. Why does a cabinet have handles? Yes, very good to open the doors with. Listen, does a cabinet have a heel? Get ready. Right. No, that would be absurd. Does a cabinet have a countertop? Get ready. Right, yes. A cabinet does have a countertop. Does a cabinet have a collar? Get ready. Right, no, that would be absurd. We're going to look at the picture of a cabinet on the next page. See if you can find something absurd in the picture. Look at the picture, everybody. What part is, what part is absurd? Get ready. Right, the shoelace. What's absurd about a cabinet that has a shoelace? 
Right, it would take a long time to open the doors. Name some objects that need shoelaces. Right, your tennis shoes. Yes, your shoes. Good job. Let's make up rules for these painters. Look at the painters who are tall. Listen, if a painter is tall, what part of the room is he painting? Get ready. Yes, the ceiling. You're going to say the rule. Start with, if a painter is tall, and tell what he is painting. Get ready. Right, if a painter is tall, he is painting the ceiling. Look at the painters who are short. Listen, if a painter is short, what part of the room is he painting? Get ready. Right. The wall. So what's the rule if the painter is short? Get ready. Right. If a painter is short, he is painting the wall. Let's say those rules again. What's the rule about a painter who is short? Get ready. Right, if a painter is short, he is painting the wall. What's the rule about a painter who is tall? Get ready. Right, if a painter is tall, he is painting the ceiling. Very good, good job, kiss your brain. And let me give you some student points because you guys are rocking it today. You guys are beating this Torres. These pictures tell a story about what a baby did. The blanket is on the chair. Where is the blanket? Get ready. Right, on the chair. First, the baby picked up the blanket. Who picked up the blanket? Get ready. Right, the baby. What did the baby do after she picked up the blanket? Get ready. Right, dropped the blanket. Now, I'm not going to point to the picture. Everybody, what did the baby do first? Get ready. Right, picked up the blanket. What did she do after she picked up the blanket? Get ready. Right, she dropped the blanket. When did she drop the blanket? Get ready. Right, after she picked up the blanket. What did she drop? Get ready. Right, the blanket. Where was the blanket? Get ready. Right, on the chair. Who picked up the blanket? Get ready. Right, the baby. Let's do some of those questions again. Where was the blanket? Get ready. Right, on the chair. Who picked up the blanket? Get ready. Right, 
the baby. What did she do after she picked up the blanket? Get ready. Right, drop the blanket. What did she drop? Get ready. Right, the blanket. When did she drop the blanket? Get ready. Right, after she picked up the blanket. Good job. When I touch a container, you'll tell me its name. Get ready. Write a picture. Get ready. Write a glass. Get ready. Write a cup. One of these containers is taller than the glass. Name the container that is taller than the glass. Get ready. Write the picture. Yes, the picture is taller than the glass. Everybody say the whole thing. Get ready. Right, the picture is taller than the glass. Again, get ready. Right, the picture is taller than the glass. One of these containers is shorter than the glass. Name the container that is shorter than the glass. Get ready. Right, yes, the cup is shorter than the glass. Everybody say the whole thing. Get ready. Right, the cup is shorter than the glass. Again, get ready. Right, the cup is shorter than the glass. Everybody open your worksheet to lesson 137. You're going to color the eggs. Here's a rule about the eggs in the basket. Some of the eggs in the basket should be green. Some of the eggs in the basket should be blue. Once more, some of the eggs in the basket should be green. Some of the eggs in the basket should be blue. Make the marks to show how you'll color the eggs in the basket. Here's a rule about the eggs that are not in the basket. Some of the eggs that are not in the basket should be broken. Make marks to show that some of the eggs that are not in the basket are broken. Here's a rule about the cats. Some of the cats should be yellow. Some of the cats should not be yellow. Make marks to show that some of the cats should be yellow. Listen. Here's a rule about a duck that is the opposite of wet. The duck that is the opposite of wet should be red. Make a mark on the duck that is the opposite of wet. Here's a rule about the dog that is the opposite of short. The dog that is the opposite of short should have a collar. Make a collar on the dog that is the opposite of short. Later, you'll color the dogs and the ducks.
turn your worksheet over and find the shaded rectangle. Listen, here's the coloring rule for this picture. Make all the rectangles yellow. What's the rule? Get ready. Right, make all the rectangles yellow. Mark the shaded rectangle. Some of the rectangles have a part missing. You're going to follow the dots and make the parts that are missing. Then color the other objects any color you want. Everybody touch the shoe. What part is missing? Get ready. Right, the heel. Touch the coat. What part is missing? Get ready. Right, the sleeve. Touch the shirt. What part is missing? Get ready. Right, the collar. Later you're going to draw in all the missing parts and then make these objects any color you want. And that's the end of lesson 137. You guys did an awesome job, UCLA. I'm so proud of you. Good job.